Welcome to the name of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We begin this evening with hymn number 657, Beautiful Savior. of few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. Behold, thou hast made my days as a handbreadth, and mine age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether bent. Thus saith the Lord, Dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. By one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. But blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who hath loved us, and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, and hath begotten us again unto a lively hope 
by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Being delivered for our offenses, he was raised again for our justification, and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. He is the first fruits of them that sleep, and said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. And three portions of scripture I'd like to share with you in particular this evening. The first, the most beloved of the Psalms, David's 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And from the Apostle Paul's first letter to the church at Thessalonica, he writes that although we grieve and mourn at a loss, at a death of a loved one, it's not mourning with no hope, but a mourning combined with a confident faith of the resurrection on the final day. Paul writes, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so then also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And from John's Gospel, our Savior's teaching of his purpose, his mission. That his death and resurrection is meant to make his heaven, his home, yours. The Lord Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. I invite you to join me with hymn 388, Just As I Am. <clears throat> hymn 388. of Peace built the new parsonage right next to the church. From the first day I moved in, I began to see a whole lot more of Marvin. Not at the house, out my window, over at the church. Whether you knew it or not, I think he at least did a daily drive-by. Some days he would get out 
and in his trademark quick paced stroll, circle the building, inspecting the grounds. Other days he'd pop in just a few minutes. Occasionally, he was inside the church quite a bit. I don't know what he was doing, but I do know Marvin was always up to something. Now, Gwen, I'm sure you knew a good deal of Marvin's daily routine, but I'm sure as well there were times Marvin was out and about and you didn't know quite where he was. One thing you did know for certain, though, wherever it was, he was up to something. Because Marvin, quite naturally and quite sincerely, took the heart, God's intended purpose for us all, to work and rework this creation. As God told our first parents, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And the unique thing about the way Marvin went about this divinely instituted work, when he encountered something difficult to subdue, a challenge, that's when you got to see his ingenuity shine. One day, right after the parsonage was completed, I remarked to Marvin what a delight it was to watch him at work. How quickly that parsonage, in many ways, his brainchild had come together. But his reply changed the tone of our conversation completely. I'm glad it's done, Pastor, he said because I'm fairly certain the Lord is bringing my time of grace to a close. I won't be here much longer. This is about two years ago, well before any formal diagnosis, yet he was not talking in some general sense. He knew then. You see, that ingenuity of his, a creative fix for any hurdle, those hurdles he encountered were all in some way consequences of our fall into sin. That our work in this creation, which had been intended to be only a blessing, is now also a hardship. As God then told Adam and Eve, Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. And what Marvin was already encountering back then, before any doctor had a name for it, was that his ingenuity, so grounded in quick reflexes and the strength to follow through on any idea, it wasn't happening like it used to. As he told me, he knew his time was drawing to a close. I didn't believe Marvin. Not then. Didn't really listen. Maybe I should have. Really, though, I should have listened to our God. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Because God said this day would come for Marvin, and someday as well for the rest of us. So to prepare you for it, Marvin asked you to listen to what he taught you from the Bible. Really, though, listen to your God.
As in your home, you were taught the plain truths of God's word, particularly as found in the six chief parts of Luther's small catechism. The Ten Commandments, which reveal the depth of our sin, the real reason it takes just so much ingenuity and effort to till this fallen earth, the real reason each of us returns to dust, and the creed, the good news that since your creator refuses to let his workmanship be so spoiled or eternally lost, he sent us Jesus. Jesus, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned creature, purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil. Not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood, and with his innocent sufferings and death. When his disciples watched it happen, Jesus so suffer and die on a cross. When they laid their dear friend's lifeless body to rest, those disciples questioned what their God could be up to. And when women returned on the third day to find an empty tomb, they wondered in despair. Where is he now? Jesus had explained it to them. He couldn't have made it more plain. Yet, on one occasion, one disciple asked out loud, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. How can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Or, as Marvin would often recite to you, or anyone else who would listen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Jesus went to the cross to pay the price of mankind's sin. And where Jesus was on Easter morning was risen in victory. Such that through faith in him, where Jesus now is, heaven, Marvin, has gone to. You cannot figure out any of this. You cannot figure out any of life on your own. Most people think they can. It leads nowhere good. But when properly explained according to the Holy Scriptures, God's inerrant word, it leads unto eternal life. Which is why when your husband, father, and grandfather was out and about, always up to something, a daily tour of the church grounds was top of Marvin's list. It's also why God's word was daily in your home, why he so encouraged you to learn it well. Take it to heart. Because what Marvin was up to, what your God has been up to, is preparing you for a day like today. Maybe you didn't always listen to him like you should have. I didn't. But much more important than listening to Marvin then is believing what Marvin's God has to say now. It is by no means too late. There, there is, in fact, no better time. No better time to get back to those basics. Commandments and creed, law and gospel, which show you your sins and the Savior who came to save you from them all. That in something as simple as the Lord's Prayer, you have on your lips the confidence of God's promise to carry you through every struggle you face 
and in baptism, the ministry of the keys, the sacrament of the altar, that your God couldn't be closer to you, ever near you, through the means of grace, the gospel in word and sacrament. Also, you might be equipped, when your time draws to a close, to look back and marvel, as did Marvin, that everything you've been, everything you've done or had, it was all by God's grace alone. Worked in your life on account of the all-atoning sacrifice and life-bestowing resurrection of Christ our Lord. For regardless how much Marvin was always up to something, your God is and has been up to far, far more. No, you won't always know what he's doing. You'll have times you'll wonder where he's gone. But the forgiveness of sins, yours, through Jesus, proves whatever it is, it's only and always for your eternal good. That what your God is up to, behind and beneath everything that comes your way, is but meant to lead and guide you on to one great and final day. A day when you will be resurrected to bodily, physical life again. When God will at the last day raise up me and all the dead and give unto me and all believers in Christ eternal life. Yes, each of us here used to see a whole lot of Marvin at work. And though these last several months we did not get to see him with those same reflexes and strength we had come to know so well, and though now we see him no more, the Spirit of God gives your hearts the hope and confidence that since Jesus lives, so does he. A fact you know now by faith, but someday, soon enough, by sight. For not only will you get to see your Redeemer in the world to come, but all believers in Christ, Marvin included. And in that new creation, with good, wholesome work before us once more, and our unique gifts and abilities sanctified and restored, I, for one, look forward to seeing whatever it is Marvin will be up to. Something, for sure. So when you think of him, his ingenuity, his passion, stamina, and drive, Remember these his unique qualities as an image and reflection of your God's tireless care for you. That your God is up to far more than you can see, even today. All for your good. Filled with a boundless grace and power to carry you through today, the days ahead, and every day until you have gone where Marvin has. Amen. I invite you to sing with me number 649. <clears throat> Jesus, Savior, pilot me. 649.
upon us. O God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. O God, the Holy Ghost, have mercy upon us and grant us thy peace. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise thee that thou hast called this our brother Marvin to the knowledge of thy dear Son kept him in the true faith, and granted him a blessed end. And we beseech thee, help us by thy Holy Spirit, rightly to know and lament our sins, and to be so strengthened in our faith in Christ, that in all things we may grow up into him who is our head, evermore praising thee in newness of life, and cheerfully awaiting that hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, world without end. Amen. Let us pray as our Savior hath taught and commanded us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, who by the death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, has destroyed death, by his rest in the tomb, has sanctified the graves of thy saints, and by his glorious resurrection, has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, so that all who die in him abide in joy as to their souls, and in hope as to their bodies. Receive, we beseech thee, our unfeigned thanks for that victory over death and the grave, which he hath obtained for us and for all who sleep in him. And keep us who are still in the body in everlasting fellowship with all that wait for thee on earth and with all that are around thee in heaven, in union with him who is the resurrection and the life, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. We close this evening with hymn 660, Heaven is my home. Hymn 660. 